Welcome to System Update. It's Bomber Tank, call me Bomber, call me Tank. And here we're talking about three different articles, one photography related, one technology related, and one video game related. Right now you're listening to an older episode, but there will be more in the future and new episodes at that. So thank you for listening and here we go. I got on this photo, this article right here, chat. So y'all know in the past, we talked about a bunch of different photography and creative ways to do photography, right? You know, we went from Iris photography to the retro Game Boy styles that we did last week. Um, but what if I told you this one particular photographer is making space photos from a parking lot? So this 62-year-old 60, Finnish photographer, uh, Jahan, uh, Jaha, he was like, he has a long career in photography so a little bit back him backstory about him he started off as a photojournalist for newspapers and fine art and he's a fine art photographer who held over 10 solo exhibitions um his photos is actually in the finnish national gallery and the La lahati art museum so back when back since like 2005 chat um he started creating these types of space photos i'm gonna I'm just quote because there's an actual term for actually doing space photography and stars. It's called astrophotography. That, and um, I know like one of my followers, he was actually into that. He's actually into that too. Um, so that's just another way uh, to just kind of like, that's what I'm using space in quotes for it. Cause you know, you're not actually in space and all that. Um, and it's such an unorthodox way of it. So he's been creating this type of photography since 2005. And how does he capture this photography? He captures the gasoline puddles that's found in, on the asphalts. And like, like, listen, for all those that drive or have noticed when they ride with someone, get out the car after it rains, you know, that rainbow looking thing, or like if you have oil and gas spills and puddles and you see like the different multi like multicolors, that's exactly what it is. Back in 05, when he was out in the field, he noticed um, next to his car, there was an oil spill on the asphalt. Uh, it reminded him when he saw this puddle, it reminded him of the Northern Lights. So I think that's what kind of like grasped his attention. Listen, like there's so much different types of photography that like, there's so many different things that you can do. There's so many creative ways to do photography. Now you don't, you don't have to limit yourself to just traditional photography. Um, so he had took some pictures while he was out in the field and then he moved about his day. But then like. One day, months later, he was like reorganizing his collection and that photo that he took when he was out in the field popped up on his uh, collection again. And he started after that, he started just walking to parking lots and taking photos after it rains. That's literally what he does. He discovered he calls them oil paintings, which kind of makes sense because it's like the oil gas puddles that's on the ground. Cause they, and sometimes they'll be mixed in with like windshield wiper fluid and all that. Um, so he takes these photos, he finds the puddles, literally all he does chat is sticks out his arm, point his camera down and take the photo. That is all he does. That is that that's legit. All he does when it comes to that, no additional tools. And he uses the surrounding ground asshole for it. That is it. That is all he does. Um, it's crazy because like when it comes to his editing style, he said that like, when it comes to his editing style, right? Um, he does try to capture exactly what he sees on the ground. Um, he does like little to minimal editing for it. And, but that doesn't stop him from experimenting with like adjusting colors and highlights and contrast to make, make it look like a galaxy and, you know, like comics and, and nebulies. Uh, and all that. So, so let's take a look at like some of these photos for it. Cause some of them is like pretty cool. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, so if we scroll down, like, look at this, look at this. Now, Loki, now, if I never told you, if I never told you, and at a very quick glance, you would have thought this was a comment, right? Because the way that this photo came out, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, you know, it was cool. It was cool. And then like. This is just a video of him like actually taking the photo, walking around, taking a photo. And then just like little other things that you see, like this one really caught my attention. And I was like, wow, like 
the way that it looks and set up. Um, I don't know which one I have a favorite of. I think I, I think like the one that I have a favorite of is yeah, like this one. Look how look how okay, like can we can can we all agree that this it looks like two people why does it look like two people dancing to you but that's the great thing about photography and like fine art and all that like everyone has a different perspective of what they see like look how look how like gorgeous this looks in my opinion yes this looks gorgeous why look just look at the colors like this is definitely like such a nice photo and this is it's crazy you like to think about how you would get this type of photo and it's literally from like everyday things that we use like this is literally from after rain and all that yeah, yeah, yeah. these are these are definitely like gorgeous like how they look and just how they like span out and again like it, it's literally like people like how we drive our cars how we do anything in that nature and like like this one was like my absolute favorite out of the whole whole um thing like the way that this just goes back to prove that you are only limited by your creativity by on you there is a when there's a will there's a way if you want to if you see something think you have an interest in doing it like go for it as far as like this is like all the guy, all this photographer does is just literally all this literally does just shows like you can find creativity anywhere in my opinion this is this is this is what this that you can find creativity anywhere i've seen though these type of puddles and i'm like man like oh like oh that's pretty like and i just never thought to like oh let me capture it on a photo and like try editing it's like oh like i got out the car oh wow like the the ground looks really pretty right like you see all the colors and then you literally will just go about your day and it's like damn somebody just took it that one step further and just like oh let me just start taking pictures of it now imagine like in a big parking lot and you first get out the car and you see just the whole spectrum of colors just across the entire parking lot you're like wow you just kind of look and you're just like man like that was gorgeous to see but it's just funny seeing all that so yeah, this is the photography one. Again, if you want to see the articles, uh, if you want to check it out, it, um, that article does have a link to his website. So you can check out uh, his other work and all that. Um, but yeah, this is what I wanted to share with you guys. So yeah, so that was it. That was that, that was the cool thing about this uh, for this photo and all that. Let's, let's move on to uh, our next article. But yeah, chat, last week we talked about how uh, vision impaired people, uh, there's a way for them to be able to see these special uh goggles goggles um that allows them to be able to see their uh their surroundings through infrared and all that board so what if i told you that those individuals that lost their ability to write would be able to just text their thoughts instead what if i told you that so i found this article this article what happens is um, your brain implants can wirelessly translate your thoughts into text, 94% accuracy. So brain gate and all that brain gate is a long standing research collaboration that uses AI to interpret signals of neural activity generated during handwriting. So basically, you know how we think about how we're going to write something. That's pretty much what that is. Researchers demoed the first human use of a wireless transmitter ca uh, capable of sending neural signals and what happened is these these are called brain computer interfaces or bcis um they're an immersive assistance technology ass yes assistive assistive technology that enables people with paralysis to type on computer screens or robotic pro uh, prosthetics just by thinking how they move their bodies. Now, go ahead. Go ahead, Khaleesi. Go ahead. Because I bet you, I bet you now, now that you said that, uh, now that I stated that, who the real targets were, I bet you feel a little bad now a little bit. Just a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit. I did. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm The whole point, it's not, it's, it's, it's more so 
to assist with writing and all that. So, um, yeah, I have a bunch of like notes from this. So we're going to be on this art, this topic for a bit chat. Um, so for years, the BCIs, which is the brain computer interfaces, they were required. You were literally required, um, to have cables connected to a sensing array in the brain to the sensing array in the brain and the computer decodes the signals to use um to drive external devices but now because of technology um they have gotten so far with their research that the traditional cables are now replaced with this device as you can see on top of the man's head um it's replaced with the device that is two inches long and 1.5 ounces. It's a transmitter that sits on top of the user's head. The device uses the same port that would traditionally be used through the wire connections that is connected through the electrode array within the brain's motor cortex. I think this made is smart. You like they have technology to text with eyeballs, but maybe this would be easier. Um, probably better for the patient's eyes too. Yeah, I would say that too. Um, it's, it's really interesting. Like when I, when I was reading this article, I was like, man, like the fact that like technology is coming such a long way for it. Um, so what happened was during this experiment, the man, they called the man T5. And at the time for, um, that he did this research, he was 65. Now he, he concentrated as he was writing, um, effectively thinking about efficiently thinking about uh, making the letters with an imaginary pen and paper. So he thought when he thought of himself writing with a pen and paper, those thoughts translated into the device, which then wirelessly transmitted to the machine to actually like, like if the person, if he was writing it, except he was just kind of thinking it, that's all. Um, as the electrodes in his motor, in your motor cortex, so you know, we, your function, your motor functions, right? Um, it recorded the signals of the brain activity and by algorithms, it ran on an external computer. It decoded the imaginary pins trajectory, which mentally traced the alphabet letters and basic punctuation marks. So like, let me show you an example for it. So like. This is the small wireless device that they had on here for it. And this is how it would operate. You would think, can I, can, okay, there we go. You would think of how you would write it and it would transmit to the computer and it would type it out or either it, but in this case, it would write it out. Um, so like this was the man's alphabet when he, when he wrote it. So the, like. So he would think about how he would write with a pen and paper, and this is what it came out to. Now, keep in mind that this person that they used um, to do this uh, this this research, he was ter he was paralyzed. He was paralyzed for at least ten years. So he hasn't moved his arm. Like he's been paralyzed for at least ten years. So the fact that like that motor skill that we still have was was able to still kind of work but just by thinking of it is very interesting and exactly um Khaleesi translating what it write uh, want to write is not exactly what they're thinking yeah what they want to write for it and then um like you know you still have to have like a whole program and stuff to it and all that um and the fact that like because of the technology and the algorithms um it's a lot easier to see the handwriting and and have the computer take a guess of what the letters are then like moving it and everything watch 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 so the crazy thing about this that the new system uses um the language models that is applied to the neural decoder letters and can create a rapid and create to an accurate text um so their previous old systems chat um they use different ways to uh decode what were the letters to write such as if you point and click typing with a computer cursor controlled by the mind so think about like you know you kind of said it with yourself right like 
there's technology that allows your eyes to see how to type out stuff. It's that they had a way that you can use your mind to move the cursor to go to that letter. Now, the dope thing about this is that in the test, right, T5 was able to reach writing speeds just by thinking. Now, this is just by thinking. He was able to reach writing speeds of 90 characters per minute. That's 18 words per minute. And this, this is the crazy thing I'm about to make the comparison of, Sue, right? The comparison of this is that it that the 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 um the 90 characters and the 18 words per minute, it's literally the same, it's almost being on par with the typing speed of a smartphone for the users in his age group. So at that time he was 65 years old. So at at that age group, most um other people around his age group was able to type that fast. He was able to think and have it write out just as fast as they would type it out. How dope is that? That's crazy right there, how that works. Going back, um, so researchers from Stanford University stated that they learned that the that the brain retrain uh retains its ability to prescribe fine movements uh, a full decade after the man lost his ability uh, to execute those movements. Um, they also created, uh, they also learned that handwriting can be interpreted more easily and more rapidly by AI algorithms. Just keep in mind though, chat, like, however, it is, despite this new type of technology, it's still a proof of concept though. It's a still a proof of concept researchers, researchers had said, uh, since this has only worked for one participant. Um, it is definitely not a complete clinical viable product yet. Um, then their next steps in their research, uh, would be, uh, to include training other people to use the interface, expanding the character set. So maybe now doing symbols and capitalization, um, and adjusting maybe the sensitivity and adding way more editing tools for the user to be able to use. Um, however, the cool thing about this is that it opens up a new path, uh, in a way to give the ability back to have these users could not, or lost the ability to like communicate through like writing or anything like that. Um, but we know it's still plenty of stuff that needs to, uh, to be worked out and, um, and all that plenty of stuff to be worked out a lot of emerging technology and everything. So chat, how did y'all feel about that? How dope was that? Let me just, let me see if I can. So let me go here. Let me see if I can find. So this is just like, so this is what the devices were using and everything. And you guys can see like the writing portion of it. Like how so cool is that? Like, it's pretty cool. You support it? Yo, it, it's so, like, it's crazy because, like, it came across my, like, feed in Flipbook. And I was like, wow, like, this is really, like, this was really cool. This was such a dope thing to kind of, like, be through and everything. So, yeah, like, a again, like, everything is just a, you know, a work in process, process and progress and all that. So like this was their previous system. Like the guy can talk, could talk, but he had to control the cursor to go spell out the word. Whereas when he thought it, it just kind of spells it out. It's about the function of people who don't have the ability to visualize. Ooh, that's interesting, Queenie. Um, I think what's gonna happen. I think the beauty about it though is. Right. You know, we talked about how this was such, this is such a, a new type of technology. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, right. If people who are, let's say blind, cause like, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, it, it's really interesting that you bring that up because like the way my thought process would be is that if somebody was blind and they would feel right, what they would do is. I guess, imagine the, the, the braille and what each letter would be. And then that those braille 
um, dots would translate into the alphabet, which would translate to, oh, that's what I would think. So like, it's kind of like the same concept. Like, you know, the guy is visualizing how he would write the letter. Um, I would envision, I would say those who can't visualize, like if like, I'm just saying, using, I'm just using uh, the, uh, the visually impaired as an example. Um, I would assume like they would be able to feel the braille, the braille um, at one point and then think about what the dots are and then those dots will convert them into the actual letters and then be able to spell the words. That's just a, that's just something I'm just kind of throwing out. That's a makeshift like way out there guest or anything for it. But it's, it's crazy because the technology is going to be there. Um, but this is just, a, you know, this is just the starting point for it. But yeah, um, I mean, I can't wait to see this technology, um, only get better. Honestly, I really can't wait to see this, um, technology get better. Um, you know, the researchers at Stanford university are just doing their thing. I was thinking more along the lines of people who are, uh, so diverse. Okay. And don't have the ability to like picture things. Oh, because it doesn't quite connect. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Like I I'm pretty sure Queenie, there's like a bunch of like a bunch of different like paths all this technology can go to um it's gonna be really interesting i mean i'll be honest i don't think it's gonna be around for that deep for our maybe our lifetime but like to just know that this, this technology is gonna be like starting off um and all that so like you know we'll see we'll, we'll see how that goes i'm pretty sure there's probably a research team that's looking more into that or have they probably have thoughts of people like that but i think it's more so you know you got to start somewhere i like it not spy at all just trying to make the world more accessible exactly exactly um and you know what cleasy thank you thank you because that that just helps segue to the next article look at that look at that see you 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 be you be right there trying to help out a brother you be really out there trying to support a brother right there let me so the last article for today chat right for the system for this week's system update right um we talked about how inclusive you want people to be in video games right be able to I, I, me personally i think everybody should be inclusive um if you want to play video games everybody should be hey, hey, hey. you see eye to eye sometimes i see, see see um so check this out um Everyone should be able to enjoy their favorite video game, regardless if you're impaired or not. So I found this article. This gamer slash inventor, um, Akako, he, he created a snap on attachment for his PS4 DualShock controller that allows players to operate all the buttons one handed. That's so dope right there. Um, so like how? He actually constructed the snap on pieces with 3d printed pieces. So he has a 3d printer and he created these 3d pieces. Um, and it even enables you to use the right thumbstick, um, which, you know, most of the time, the right thumbstick is going to be the camera view of everything. And you can use it by like having this attachment on your leg. And what it will do is. It allowed it rests on a hinge and allows you to move the controller itself. That allows you to that's how you do your camera angles for it. Um, and even not only that, he made the side trigger buttons that can be also be operated with one hand. Um, with the left hand with the will let the hand be extended uh, on the extended arm for it. Um, so like you know, most first person shooters are gonna be uh, left L2 to aim, R2 to shoot, right? That's how usually most, you know, unless you go in there and change button settings, that's how most shooters are going to be. Um, but the inventor, you know, it's crazy. Cause like, like now, like when you press the one trigger, it does the other trigger on the other side. So now like as soon as, soon as you aim, it'll shoot, uh, which is really dope. It's really cool for it. Um, so the inventor actually made all these 3D printing model files for free. So, I mean, 3D printing, 3D printers are expensive as is all hell. But if you so happen to own one, you can, you can download these files and be able to like 
um like make your own version for it um and it's crazy because it brings me back to a time like i've had these conversations with um like my manager we have an entrepreneur center um at the college and like you know the the ideas that he thinks of is so crazy because it reminds me of the story he told was like he did research on his own was talking to other um like technology people in that in that area and like other schools are like using 3d printing for specific stuff like somebody made a uh, prosthetic like a leg for like uh, an animal and you know people love their animals people people love their animals like he made a prosthetic leg for like i think it was for a cat and it was like really great and then like not only that like you use 3d printers you can make a um uh uh um what is that a case for the for like their leg if it's, if it's a broken leg or anything like you don't have to do that it's so great to see this another great invention you should get funding for playstation for this it's crazy like it's so cool so so him himself is not um uh like one-handed or one-armed um but he like in his video he shows off like if r like this is what you can do and then um like this is the back of the controller right here so when you trigger this it, like when you trigger this it'll do the others for it so it was really cool like how he has it set up and it's all snap on features uh for it so let's check this out chat um really quickly so like so this is how the controller looks that's really so damn fire i know right so like i'm just gonna skip through some stuff so that's how you move the camera by moving the controller itself and then you still have access to the buttons on here and when you press it it'll press the buttons on the other side can the, if he's uh contact able gamers i don't know i have no idea he has a youtube channel so chat and in the article it'll take you to his youtube channel i i took a look at his youtube channel real quick and he has like other things too like for one-handed stuff like one-handed like how to do like the aerial games and all that it's really cool uh to look and see and then you can see like he takes down like the like the, the he assassinated just by pressing the button and it's so dope um i'm gonna go and let's see so like this is him explaining like how the how everything was set up and this is like the 3d printing and then like see he just takes off the hinge and he also made a um a uh ps5 version too when i looked on his channel he had a ps5 version so it was pretty cool um and yeah see that's literally and then you can set it up for the other side too so you know if you're if you're not only left, if you're only right-handed or right-armed, you can just mirror the, the 3D printer uh, files and it will print it for the other side. Like, it's just really cool that, like, that's how you can move and you can see him playing the game, testing this out and everything. 3D printing has given you solutions to both big and small problems. Yes, exactly. Like, 3D printing is so, it's really great. Especially like those that like that if they had, I would really like to meet someone that has like a 3D printed home and see what's their thoughts about it. And see, you just take off the case and then you can move it to the other side. Like, look how cool that is. That is such a dope thing. That you literally see him playing like in like flying and all that it, it it's it's really it's really really such a dope uh really such a dope thing for it um i think like in his video he has like a link to do like some donations or anything uh for the project um and like for his charity of choice and all that so you know i would say you know take a look at the article go take a look at the youtube channel and all that that was amazing very nice yeah i i figured it was really great like i was like oh this is such a great like article to read and i was checking out the stuff and it was so it's so cool because then like you know this is just another way how we can be more inclusive in 
in the video game aspect like it's so dope um that like somebody decided to like take their 3d printer and just print out a bunch of stuff because stuff from 3d printing is expensive so the fact that like he's going out his way to do this to make it to make gaming more accessible is such a great feeling um in all that so chat what did you guys think of um of this week's system article the system system article system updates <laughs>